Chapter 1 When I was little, a kid pointed at me at the playground and shouted, Her arms fell off, then ran away screaming in terror to his mom, who had to cuddle him on her lap and rub his head for ten minutes to get him to calm down. I think up until then, I hadn't thought about the idea that my arms may have actually fallen off at some point in my life. I had never really thought about not having arms at all. My missing arms weren't an issue for me or my parents. I never once heard either of them say, Oh no, Even can't possibly do that because that's only for armed people. Or, poor Even, it's so helpless without arms. Or maybe Even can, maybe Even can do that one day, you know, if she grows some arms. They always say things like, you'll have to do it differently from other people, but you can manage. And I know this is challenging. Keep trying. And you're capable of anything, even. I had never realized just how different I was till the day that horrible kids shouted at my arms and how they must have fallen off. For the first time, I found myself aware of my total armness. And I guess I felt like sort of naked all of a sudden. So I too ran ran to my mom, and she scooped me up and carried me away from the park, allowing my tears and snot to soak in her shirt. As she drove us home that day, I sat whimpering in the car seat and asked her what had happened to my arms and why they'd fallen off. She told me that they hadn't fallen off. I was just born like that. I asked her how come I can get some new ones, and she said I couldn't. I wailed in despair, and she told me to stop crying because having arms was totally overrated. I didn't know what overrated meant at the time, but I said, but like I said, I was really little, and so was my brain. I kind of figured it out over the next few days, though, because my parents were constantly saying things like, coloring this picture with my hands is okay, but if I can only color it with my feet like even, now that would be fantastic. And eating spaghetti with my arms is just so boring. I wish I could eat it with my feet. And the only person I know who can pick their nose with their toes is even. She sure is a special little girl. Dad even went to as far to ask mom if there were any arm removal services in the area. Growing up, I could do most everything anyone else with arms could do. Eating cereal, brushing my teeth, and hair. Getting dressed, and yes, even wiping my own bottom. I know you're instantly wondering how I do it, and maybe I'll tell you later. Maybe. Until then, you'll have to live in suspense. Sure, these things take longer for me. Sometimes they take a lot longer. Sometimes I used to use a special tool like a hook or a scrub or something like that and every now and then I want to scream in frustration and kick a pillow until the stuffing comes out because it's taken me 20 minutes to get my pants unbuttoned but I can button my pants I think I can do all these things because my parents have always encouraged me to figure things out well more like made me figure things out on my own I suppose if they had done everything for me I'd be helpless without them but they didn't and I'm not and now I'm 13 years old I don't need much help with anything. True story. When I started kindergarten, the kids were a little weirded out by my lack of armage. I got asked just about every day what happened to my arms, as well as a billion other silly questions, like how do I make farting noise with my armpits when I don't have arms, hands, or pits? And how do I play dress up, which I tried showing them and ended up with the pink fluffy tutu thing stuck around my head for five minutes before the teacher finally realized and helped me put it down to my waist. I got so tired of telling them the same boring story about being born without arms, and I started making stuff up. This was stinking hilarious. I knew from the first moment I told a girl my arms had burned off in a fire, I had found a great hobby, making up stories. I loved the way her eyes grew wide with shock and the way her voice went all high-pitched with excitement as she asked me a bunch of more questions about my charted arms. Her, what kind of fire accident? Me, a wild forest fire burning out of control. Her, where? Me, in the mountains of Tanzania. I honestly didn't know where Tanzania was or if it had any mountains. I think I had heard the name in an episode of Scooby-Doo or something. Her, how old were you? Me, just a helpless baby. My mom barely rescued me in time. She pulled me from the burning crib and raced out of our flaming village, leaving a trail of fire all the way down the mountains as my arms burned off to a crisp. They looked like two pieces of bacon by the time we got to the village hospital. Another kid standing nearby. Cooked or uncooked? So I kind of traumatized her and had a meeting with my parents and a teacher later about my story. My parents squinted their eyes and pursed their lips and nodded their head as the teacher told them. Um, even told another child that her arms burned off in a wildfire in the mountains of Tanzania. She peered at them over with her eyes, frowning. She also mentioned something about bacon. 
I had never seen such serious look on my parents' faces before. Like they were concentrating so hard on being serious, their heads might explode if they blinked. They said seriously they would talk to me about it, and shook the teacher's hand seriously and gave me a serious look as we walked seriously out of the school. But I could tell they weren't mad because all the way home, one of them would softly snore and then the other would giggle and the other would shake from laughing, but trying not to laugh out loud and on and on like that the way home. They later told me just to be truthful so I didn't have to upset any other kids. And I did for a long time, but then one day in fifth grade, we had a new kid come to our school. I had gone to the same school since kindergarten, and all my friends knew I was born with no arms. When I sat down at lunch with this kid, he said, Whoa! What happened with your arms? All my friends were looking at me, and what can I say? I exploded out of me like an overflowing water balloon. I told him a crazy story about how I had been rescued a puppy, and then been tied to train tracks just the time before the train nearly ran over it, just in time for the puppy, but not for my poor flattened arms. You should have seen the look on the kid's face priceless my best friend emily bursting out laughing my friend kayla spit chocolate milk across the table and the new kid realized it was a joke and started laughing too pretty soon everyone was constantly asking me hey even where did your arms go and i would have a new story to tell over time the stories got more and more ridiculous alligator wrestling wrestling in the everglades in florida freaking roller coaster ac- accidents skydiving trips gone wrong I made my stories as ridiculous as possible so people would always know I was always joking. I grew up with those kids. I never felt out of place or anything. My armlessness wasn't strange or weird to them because, like I said, I had always gone to the same school. I never imagined my parents would make me leave. I never thought they would make me move all the way to Arizona and go to a new school right after starting 8th grade. Then again, I never imagined I would save the Old West, perform for an audience in the desert, and solve a mystery. You'd be surprised at all I'm capable of, even without arms.